Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to say thank you to our presiding elder for that powerful and really quick, quick. That was quicker than I expected, I'm not going to lie. That was mad quick. Thank you, elder, for that wonderful word. God bless you. Very powerful. See, what elder said is basically, we're here tonight. You might have 99 problems, but God is not one of them. You might have 99 problems, but God ain't one. So therefore, who's happy and blessed to be here? My idea, my idea. Reverend, no, my idea. After, after, after we call on our brother, Reverend Prepper Graceman, to come up, maybe they'll do a better job, right? Let's call on our brother, Reverend, to come up and give him Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Oh, is that the loudest amen? amen. And can we clap for Papa again? Clap for our family again. In fact, he has blessed us. He has blessed us a lot. In fact, you know, sometimes in atmospheres like this, if you take it for granted, there's a wild view for you. Don't take, don't take things like this for granted. If you have the opportunity to spend a minute in the house of God, please do. If you have 100 days outside, forget it. There is no place like home. Amen. And this is home. Amen. Whenever the enemy rises up against us, prayer can solve things. I believe in prayer. But there are times that the enemy pushes more when you are praying. Whilst you are asking God, God, what should I do? The enemy is now showing you pictures of what you are not capable of. But when you praise, there is something that comes in your spirit. It is called joy. Get this right. There are two things in this world that everybody needs. Happiness and joy. Happiness is as a, as a result of the happenings. So something must happen for me to be happy. But there is this thing called joy. Which is the strength of believers? David said the joy of the Lord is... My oh, come on, you are not in church. The joy of the Lord is... So sometimes we don't need to have it to praise. We don't need to carry it to thank Him. I remember there was a day I was telling God that I need a child. I wasn't married yet. But I said to God, I need a child. And one of my friends said, why are you praying this prayer? When you know you are not married. Do you, want to, do you want to do something? I said, no. I'm praying in advance. And guess what happened? I married in 2017 and that same year my wife got pregnant. Four months into the pregnancy, the baby died. I went to God and I started praying in tongues. I prayed in tongues. I said, God, save this baby. And he was silent. I went to my father and I said, man of God, I, I don't know why God is silent on this situation. And I remember very well one thing he said to me that changed my life. He said, his silence is even an answer. Go home. Amen. God did not save that baby, honey. He did not. That baby died. I thought he, it was a disappointment. Not knowing he was trying to give me a glory out of that story. Today, I don't even remember that my wife has lost, my wife and I have lost the baby. I don't remember. Because by the grace of God, I have three kids. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's clap for me because very soon I might, I might, I might release another one. Hallelujah. Because I told God that I just want to shame the devil with what he did. So just give me more. Amen. Bless me with abundance. I need my sons to be playing all the instruments in the church. Because an instrumental is what's my idea. <laughs> I want you to have this thing in your mind whilst we worship God. Don't, don't have it until you thank Him. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, be thankful in all circumstances because this is what God wants from you in your life and in union with Christ Jesus. Why do we always want to have it before we come to church? Oh, believers, let us thank God for what He has done. 
Must it always be that he has given us money, jobs and other things before we say thank you? I've seen somebody that said, I will come to your church on Sunday. Papa, I don't know what happened. The following Sunday, the only message we received was the guy is dead. Oh. So, what was he waiting for? I always worship God like it was. It, it is my last day on earth. So today, I don't want you to look on to me. I am a vessel. I did not come for me to be worshipped. I came to worship him. So I want you to stand to your feet. Forget about whoever you came to church with. And let us sing unto God. Now unto
in myself. How will it be? Now, let us get into the courts with the springs. Ca can we do that? Yes. Are you sure you are in church? Can we do that? Yes. I just want us to enter into his courts with that praise. And in the realms of the spirit, how I see things, the angels are even in, they, they even question and ask, what are you doing here? Because they know that they are the only ones that carries that energy to stand before him. To stand be, be, between, be, be in between that cause. It is them alone. But later they, do, they, they know that we also have that energy. And this is the song. Yehi Odina And if they question you, what are you saying? Tada! Zawayatia! Oh, 
abundance. You are not less of a God. You are bigger than what people say. So if I declare that we are now, it means give me my marriage. Give me my promotion. And open doors unto me. Because you have done it before.
again. You will find that come to take the blessings and maybe them one by one, and he lost count of them. So he couldn't find words to express his love and his gratitude towards his father. So he just so out and said, I am. Questions, why do you do what you do for God with so much passion? There's never been a day that I've invited I've been invited to a program that I'll discuss money. You could ask Steve. We don't talk about money. All we need is God will be there. If the answer is yes, we are coming. That's the problem. Because if it's money, I'll work Monday to Friday, I get it. But all I need is longevity of life. And money can buy that. Doctors told my mom, if this boy lives to five years, then it is God. They said I would die before five years. That is why sometimes when I'm singing about his glory and I'm adoring him like that, I do it with every energy in me. Because Kamehu, can you wouldn't have been smiling at this grace of God working. So I don't need to preach to you with Peter. Or John, for you to believe that there is God, I will show you myself because I'm a living testimony. Yeah. The last time I was advising a couple of friends, they are youths. I told them, nobody told me that I was going to be what I am doing now. Even if they said it, I would doubt it. Do you know what I wanted to do? A footballer. Yeah, man. I was good with it. I was good with that. I went into secondary school, then I started entering into rap music. Up to now, I have hip life songs on YouTube. People don't even know it's me. <laughs> we, we've done so many things with life because we thought that was where our joy was. But one day, we had an option to choose between an all night service. Or to have the opportunity to perform with Obrafo and Easy and those people on stage. 
And five of my friends, I have four of them telling me, this is your talent. Go and do it because God gave it to you. Go and do it and you'll get money. Or Brafo and them, they don't, they don't even call anybody, but you have that opportunity to come and rap with them. Go. And one person said, if you go there and you die, what will you tell your maker? And I looked at them and I said, okay, yeah. God gave me this gift, right? They said, yes. I said, okay, I'd rather choose to work for him yeah. than to entertain people. That same day I left that place, I lost all my four friends. The reason was that I have been brainwashed. And when they started seeing me everywhere, they said to other people that, oh, you will come back. And I said, me, if I come back, maybe I'll die and return. But even if I come back, I'll still be doing what God has given me to do. Because I enjoy singing for him. I said this testimony and there was this prophet of God and he said, you don't look like it. That's why I love that song. I don't look like what I have been through. <laughs> you turn my pit into a well. <laughs> so the essence of my prayer can turn on your feet. I get home because I can still feel the presence of God in me. He has not left me yet. I, I love to take him home. <laughs> I love to take him home. But I want us to sing this song. Just let it come down so I don't change the song. Let it come down for me. I told my grandmother that if I share the testimony and if there is anybody expecting the fruit of the womb or anybody expecting promotion, anybody expecting something from God. May God do it like, like nothing even was there. Amen. The Bible said he called out for things that were not Amen. as if they were. They were. Yes. So if there is any healing you are seeking for in your body, let's sing this song. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mommy, can you sing it louder for me? Yeah. This is my last song. I want to share my testimony in between the songs and I give the microphone to the MC. I'll give it to you very soon. When the doctor said I will die before five years, I passed the age of four. Yeah. I was not dead. Amen. But guess what? Mm. I was always getting sick. Mm. My mom will always put me on her back. Even when she's going out to buy water, family members would just call each other, oh, he's taking that sickle cells of his side. They said I had sickle cells. Mm. But I knew there was nothing wrong with me. Doctors couldn't find it. But family mm. created it with their mouth and said he has sickle cells. Now when the family, when they gather and I appear, they're like, oh, give us off for a seat. I'm like, oh my good God. Yeah. Yes, I know. Oh, yeah. When I passed the age of five, said he cannot walk. I was still sitting in a walker at the age five. My mother supports church. Let it go down like that. My mother supports the things of God. 
so well. My mom bought a, a, a land for pastors, bought a land for church, wow. was paying money here and there. And the reason why she was doing that wasn't because she loved God, because she was waiting for God to heal her son. Amen. You know, sometimes you, you give not because you love him. You give because you want him to give back something to you. My mom did all that and she got tired of doing it. Anytime there's a church harvest, my mom's name will be mentioned first because they know she carries the money. But what's the essence of you carrying money and your son needs something that money can't buy? Oh, yeah, so that Sunday, Papa, she did not go to church. And guess what? Our church was next to our house. We shared the same fence wall. So we could hear the church people worshiping, praising. But my mom was tired. And she was washing her clothes on Sunday morning. Sometimes when you get tired, you don't care about God and His things anymore. Let's be honest, we're humans. Sometimes you get into a position in your life and you feel like, What's the essence? So that was the state my mom was in. And while she was washing, I don't know why she was still singing that song. If you are truly tired, you see, humanity, no matter how, how ungrateful you are, there is something inside you that still glorifies God. There is always a breath in you when you stretch, you're like, oh Jesus, even though you've forgotten about him. Yeah. But you stretch and you're like, oh Jesus. Even if you hit your, your foot on the stone, you're like, Jesus, you can't take him away from your life. My mother was tired, washing and singing the same song. And then I know what I'm saying, I'm in here. She said her faith is gone, her hope is gone. She's still saying, oh yeah, yeah. And I was playing in my walker, just playing there, like that. And there was this little stairs. I decided to get closer to it. I fell from the stairs with my walker. And when I hit the floor, my teeth came out. Blood was coming out. Then my mom was in a haste, picked me up. The moment she picked me up, do you know what she said? She said, oh God, my son is dead. Cause she saw the blood coming out like that and she placed me there to go get a rock to come and clean the blood. All she saw was the boy that couldn't walk was walking. Now instead of that crying and caring about how hurt I was, she was glorifying God. Oh yeah, yeah. She had me in her arm. And she didn't even want me to walk again, but she had me and she was just singing the song. Oh yeah, yeah. Now when I grew up, I went to church and I was praying. There was nobody in the church. I said I wanted to do God's way. I want to sing for him, but I want to sing in a unique way. I don't like the way everybody's singing. I want to do it the way he wants me to do it. So he should set me apart. And when I was praying, I remembered this testimony my mom gave me and I told God. I'm like, God, why did you wait for me to fall off with blood coming before you made me to walk? And he said, in my terms, before you go up, before I lift you up, I must cause you to go down. And he showed me a picture of some men at the construction site. I went there and I saw them building this boys' quarters. And I realized that they did not dig the foundation deep down. But when they were building the story building, they had to dig it deep down. I asked why and they said, if the building has to go up, the foundation has to go down. Then I said, God, anytime you put me down, thank you. Anytime you cause me to go deep down, thank you. Do with me as it pleases you now.
something away
something that way Take something that way Take something that way
gatherings like this we feel like it's all fun it's all fun but God is doing something my prayer is that you will do something new in your life oh tonight he will do something new in your life you will not come here the same hallelujah I want to say offering people are leaving me <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah where's the offering take an offering hallelujah Our Lord, our Lord, 
my sorrows. Come on, come on, and I'm trading my singing. Hey, I lay the ground for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. Hey. I'm trading.
There's a big scar this way. Big one, very big one. It was like a grapefruit, according to the doctors. He told me it's a 50 50 percent chance that you'll live. So, as a young man, actually, I actually spent my 18th birthday in the hospital bed. As a young man, I was discouraged. Even at that time, I felt like I was doing the work of God. I felt like I was. You know, do my best. Sometimes I'll pick up the youth for two hours. I'll go and pick everybody up. We have classes. After that, I'll spend another two hours. Go drop everybody home. I was doing the work of God. But it got to that point and if if you don't take care, you you will give up on your God. Tonight, I don't know what is upon your life. You may be wanting to give up. But God will never shame you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, they told my mom, oh, encourage your, your boy. He looks like he's down. Call your pastor. Let me speak. We don't even know what he looks like. Is it cancer or is it, is it benign or, 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 or you know, the, the, the one that spreads. Hallelujah. Which one is it? So I was praying. Oh, God. I, I, do you need me in heaven right now? <laughs> Sometimes we're like, we don't want to die. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. <laughs> you need me in heaven right now. But I knew God was not done with me yet. So I remember that the night before the surgery, I was reading Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place Jesus. of the Most High God. Psalm Abide. Shall I buy? Shall I buy? Shall I buy? Oh Jesus. So we prayed. We did everything. Long story short, for 12 hours I was on the surgery bed. They operated me and everything. I said, oh, we went there, we screened everything just in case there's, you know, if you have cancer coming there, you know, we I actually lost a, a good chunk of my liver, but liver grows by itself, so I lost a good chunk of it. They actually took out my gallbladder as well. So I was like, I'm here. I don't have the gallbladder. It's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the one who watches his people. Uh, every year they said, go and check. Go ultrasound and see if it came back. It came back. I am 33 now. And it has not come back. It is the healing power of God. So sometimes when I'm singing and I'm going crazy, somebody does it. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh 
He gave me life. S S M Kotolo. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so through the storm, continue to praise Him. Through the storm, continue to thank Him. Hallelujah. You don't know, you don't know what, you know, even Paul, Paul, a man who fought for God, his head was cut off. But he, he, he followed God to the end. I'm sure he's rejoicing in heaven. And if you are sick, I want you to put your hand on where the sickness is. And as we sing this song, the sickness is leaving you. Yes, Lord. 
maso tali kapadili inde basi atahi li malu zali katenda la baha marema katunduri bazi indi kibasi talu andeha mando kete li bali buzi inde li inkantuli inde basi aha moshali katori basi andari maha Are you looking for a friend? <laughs> He's so close to you. the Lord. Hallelujah. Ebenezer. That's why the Lord has brought us.